Hello, my most amazing artist. I'm jumping right into our art class catchphrase. Please join me if you would. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Today we're going to be drawing a picture of ourselves, otherwise known as a self-portrait as a chef. Before I tell you what supplies to go grab, a big shout out to our sponsors, Ticonderoga and Art to Remember. Ticonderoga makes the best pencils, but today I'm going to be sharing their brand of markers that are called Prang. I love their Prang markers because not only do the colors go on really beautifully bold and bright, but whenever we do that trick of turning our markers into paint, they work the best. Thank you for making amazing art supplies and for providing those to me, Ticonderoga, so I can share them with all of you amazing artists. Also, art to remember. Every day we make art that we want to remember and cherish forever, but sometimes artwork gets lost or damaged. One way to make sure that that doesn't happen and you can remember it forever is with art to remember. All you have to do is take a picture on your phone, upload it from your phone to their website, and boom, now you have your own online art gallery. Added bonus, you can then get all of your artwork printed on tons of things, including items for holidays like Christmas, Mother's Day, birthdays, Father's Day, and more. So thank you, Art to Remember. All right, let's talk about what we're making today, our chef selfies. So for this, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser if you like to draw with those things. I'll be drawing with a permanent marker. You'll need coloring markers and crayons. We will be using the elements of art. Let's go through them, shall we? Because we're going to be using all of them. Lines, shapes, color, baby, color, form, value, texture, and space. Before we get rolling, pinkies out, people. <clears throat> I pinky promise that on my chef self-portrait, I will do my best. I will keep a positive attitude, and I will finish what I start. Mwah! All right, grab that paper, markers, whatever you want to use, and let's get started. All right, guys, today we're going to be drawing ourselves as a chef. I will be making two drawings. I'll be drawing a chef like this one here and a chef like this one here. It also might be helpful for you to just watch what I draw here and then draw along with me when I draw a second time. That way you don't fall behind, but you know you can always press that pause button to get caught up with me. All right, I'm gonna move these out of the way so we can get started. To begin our chef selfie, let's go ahead and start with that label at the bottom. You can make it a couple of ways. I'll draw two different ways. So the first one, I kind of made an arch line right here. Why don't you go ahead and find the bottom middle of your paper, make an arched line like a rainbow near the bottom, and then go ahead and draw that arched line like this. Or you could do it a different way. You could just draw a straight line like this. Now with the straight line, what I'm going to do is turn this into a rectangle like this. Up, up, and across. For this one, over here I'll do something similar. I'll go up, up, and then when I go across, I'm gonna go across like an arch like a rainbow, repeating this line right here just like that. Now I can make this look a little bit like it's three-dimensional by adding a couple of lines. So starting in the middle on the side here, I'm gonna make a line that goes out and comes down. You could make it straight across. I gave mine a little bend. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then near the bottom of this rectangle, Close to the corner, I'm going to make a line that comes down. Same thing over here, a line that comes down. 
I'll make a line that goes over, it's about the same length as this other one. Over, and it's about the same length as that other one. Now to close it, I'm going to make a sideways V. In, out. In, and out. Sweet. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this one. So starting in the middle, curve, curve, down, down, same length, same length, and close it, close it. Awesome, okay, now we can write our name on the inside of here. You might wanna write the word chef first, And then you can add your name. So I wrote the word chef and I kind of squished my letters close together so that I would have enough room for my name. So I'm gonna leave some space here and this portrait's gonna be Chef Bob. You could write your name, I'm going with Chef Bob. And then maybe over here, this one will be me, so I'll write Chef Cassie. <laughs> It's kind of tricky to make sure that you have enough space, so always double check the end of that line. Might have to skirt those letters together a little bit to get it all to fit. Okay, great. Now, let's work on the face of our chef self-portrait. So the first thing I want you to do is find the middle of your paper. There it is, and now I'm going to go up, but just a little bit. I'm going to be drawing my face so that it's tilted a little bit. So where my finger is making a diagonal line are where my two eyes will go. I'll start with one. So I'm going to make a diagonal line right here. So I'll do the same thing here. I find the middle, I go up a little bit. I'm going to draw a diagonal line right there. Okay, now I'm going to close this line by making an arch like a rainbow. And on the inside of that arch shape, it's now not even an arch shape, that an arch is a kind of a line, it's a half circle shape. I'm going to be drawing another repeating line in there for the iris, the colorful part of the eye. And another line inside of there for the pupil. If you want to, you could draw a line down the middle of the pupil if you have room. If not, it's no big deal. And then you could add a little color for the highlight. All right, instant replay. I'm gonna make a big curve like a rainbow here. Do two smaller rainbows on the inside. Divide it in half and add a little bit of color. Okay, now on this one, you could draw the same eye. I'm just leaving a little space. Or you could draw a winking eye. So I think I'll draw another eye here. I left a little space in between, trying to make sure that there's enough room for my nose. Now I'm going to make another rainbow curve. I'll try to make it the same size. It's always tricky to make things the same. We just do our best. I'll add another rainbow and another one. Make a line that divides that in half. See how I'm going a little faster because I'm repeating those steps. Now, if you want to, you could add eyelashes. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Eyelashes keep dust and dirt out of our eyes, which would be pretty important if you were trying to bake something. Okay, let's say on this one, I want to have a winking eye. So for that, I'm just going to use a curve and add some eyelashes. Piece of cake, so easy. Now I'm going to work on the nose. You could draw your nose any way you like. I'm gonna draw my nose just like that, like a tiny little rainbow. Maybe on this one, I'll make it like that. You can decide. And next up is the mouth. I'm assuming that you're a happy chef and you've made something quite delicious, so you're very, very happy. I'm gonna make a big curve just like that. It looks like I'm really very happy, doesn't it? If you want to, you could then draw another line that comes down, over, and up. And when you do that, then you will have made the mouth look like it's open. You could add another curve inside for the tongue and leave it just like that, or add teeth. I'll show you how on this one. So I'm gonna make a big smile, and then I'll open the mouth. 
This shape that I'm drawing is called a crescent, using all the elements of art. And maybe on this one, I'll just add teeth. There we go. If you're using a marker like me, maybe I'll add some teeth on this one. There we go. If you're using a marker like me, you can go ahead and color this in. You could wait until later when you go over this with the marker and color it in then. So it's up to you. You could even grab some crayons or color pencils, whatever you decide that you want to color with to add a little color inside the mouth to show that it's dark in there. So to create a shadow. All right, now that the face parts are done, we should probably give the chef a face. So take your finger and let's draw the letter U just a couple of times. This will help you decide the size and scale of the face. I don't think you want to make it this big because then you won't have enough room for other things. So once you've drawn it a couple of times with your finger, your letter U is going to go down around your chinny chin chin and back up. It's almost like a letter U that kind of rolled backwards a little bit. I will go ahead and continue on this one by drawing the letter C and then a backwards C for the ears. All right, same thing on this one. Drawing a letter U, coming back up. Whoa, I almost didn't make it. And then I'll draw a C and then another C. Awesome, now let's work on that chef's hat. So I'm going to make a line that starts here and goes over and then down to the top of the other ear. So I'm gonna go up, over, and notice how I keep stopping to double check. I'm gonna make it and down. Now that the head is closed in, I could add some eyebrows to show how my chef is feeling. Hopefully they made something delicious so they're pretty excited. If it were me in the kitchen, it might not be the case. Now I'm gonna draw two lines that come up and up for the band at the bottom of the chef hat. I'm gonna repeat those steps here, up, over, and down. Eyebrows, please, to show how I'm feeling. And I look a little uncertain about this one. That's pretty much how I always feel when I'm making something. Lines that come up. And now let's go ahead and make this band go across. Close it in. Now a chef hat, I don't know much about chef hats, but they always look like there's a big poofy cloud up here. I'm working with a limited space. So I could take my finger and work on making a series of curved lines to see how that will fit in this space. And then once I've practiced it a couple of times, I'm just making a series of curved lines. I'm gonna stretch some of them all the way up to fill that space. Awesome, you could make it any way you want to. I think I'll draw a couple lines like this kind of show that the hat is big and it's going into a smaller space. All right, repeating those steps here, making my band across the top. And I could even loop some of those lines to make them not so much the same. To squeeze my hat in right there. My hat's a little lopsided over there, which will make it even more awesome. All right, now that we have our hat complete, let's add the neck and then talk about our hair. So my head is tilted. To show that it's tilted, my lines are going to come straight down. And then to end my neck, because your neck is a cylinder form, use a curve. Now, if you have short hair, you could add a little bit of a curve line here underneath the hat. If your hair is straight, Maybe it's just sticking out from the back side of your hat a little bit. Could put a couple of little lines right there. It's kind of smooshed against your forehead. There we go. And maybe on this one, I better draw the neck first. Two vertical lines that come down, close it to create a cylinder. My hair is a little bit longer, maybe kind of wavy a little bit. Awesome. Okay, now let's work on our body. A chef is always going to be wearing an apron. So to draw that, I'm gonna first draw my torso. That's all I'll have room to include today is my torso. So I'm gonna draw a shoulder line here at the base or the bottom of the cylinder, which is my neck. 
I'm going to draw another line right there. Those are going to be my shoulders. Repeating those steps, diagonal line and diagonal line. Perfect. Now I'm gonna show that I have maybe one hand on my hip. So I'm going to have this elbow come out. There's my elbow. And then it's going to come back in. It's probably gonna end when it bumps into something like my little sign right down here. And now I'm gonna draw starting here where my shoulder met my arm, a straight line that goes down. Okay, I'm repeating those steps. I'm making an arm that goes out, comes back in, starting at my shoulder, making a line that goes down. I kind of curved that line a little bit. I'm gonna draw an angle inside. There we go, now we see the arm. It's kind of hidden behind our sign. Our sign is overlapping it. Maybe our hand is behind our back. We're being very, very fancy. And now let's draw our chef tray here, something that's underneath our tray. So I'm gonna draw a nice oval. I'm thinking about a good placement for it. I have a nice space here. So what I think I'll start with is making two little dots that will show how wide I want my tray to be. So maybe I'll put a dot there, put a little dot there. To show my tray, I'm gonna go down, over, and up. Now yours might be in a totally different place and that's great. Two little dots, down, over, and up. Great, now why don't we work on making the big dome that our amazing thing that we've created will be underneath. So what I'm gonna do is start, I think I'll decide how tall I want my dome to be. There we go, I think that would be a good place. So now I'm gonna start at my dot and curve down to my oval line that I made. Starting here, coming down to that line. Notice the lines haven't connected yet. Close this one with the same kind of curve. And then we can't leave these lines just hanging out in space, so go ahead and curve them around until they bump into that dome. Awesome. Let's make this dome kind of shiny by adding a couple of these lines. Straight, straight, vertical down, vertical down. Had a little bit of a bend to it. Make a little top with two lines and a circle. Okie dokie, let's try it over here. All right, so let's see. I made a polka dot. I came down to here, down to there, brought this over to here and closed those lines because I can't have no lines just hanging out in this place. Make a little top. If you wanna make it shiny a different way, you could just draw a group of lines like this that follow the form of what you just drew. All right, we're on the home stretch. We just need an arm that goes down and comes up to hold this. So starting here, I'm gonna make a letter V that goes down and goes up to the tray. Down, up to the tray. Repeating over your instant replay, down and up to the tray, awesome. Now let's go ahead and start here at the shoulder meeting the arm and come down. At the shoulder meeting the arm, come down. I'm going to repeat this V line a little bit lower, right down there. And my hand is hidden underneath because my hand is flat holding the tray up. And right down there. Great, guys. Now to make our apron. Down, down, and across. There's our apron. Down, down, and across. Now, if you want to, you could leave it just like this. But I wanted to create kind of like a circle or an oval that went around me. That way I had a little bit more area to color in. So if you wanna do that, all you have to do is this. 
take your finger and just draw an oval. But now when you draw this oval, you won't be drawing over your face. So once you've drawn it with your finger a couple of times, practice by drawing and then hop, draw, then hop, draw, then hop, and draw. All right, let's see if I can do it. Gonna hop over my head because I don't want to draw on it. Hop over my dome. I'm imagining how that line would continue before it comes down to there. And if you want to add an extra one, you can. All right, friends, now I'm going to be grabbing my crayons to color in my portrait and then some markers to add a little bit of color to the background. Now that I'm all finished coming with my crayons, I'm gonna grab some markers, and I'm thinking of some colors for the background, that kind of oval shape that I drew. And you know, I think I'm gonna go with a green and maybe a blue. So I'm not going to color the whole thing. I'm just using my marker on its side, and I'm adding a little bit of color with a couple of sweeps of the side of my marker. The reason I'm using the side of my marker is because it can create a thicker kind of line. This will be important when I am trying to make paint with my marker. I need to build up a nice layer of marker to kind of make it into paint. So I'm just tracing around these edges. So to turn this into paint, all you're going to need is a paintbrush and a little cup of water. That's it. The way this trick works is, is that this is a water-based marker, meaning it has two ingredients, water and pigment. Pigment's another name for color. So as soon as you add water to this paper, it turns that pigment into a kind of paint. The reason this won't work for a permanent marker, which is what I drew with, I drew my design, my chef, with a permanent marker, the reason it doesn't turn into paint is because a permanent marker is permanent. Those lines aren't going anywhere. So if you did draw your self-portrait with a water-based or a coloring marker, you probably won't want to do this trick because the colors or the lines will smear of your drawing. And I wouldn't want that to happen to you. All right, now that I've got this finished, I think I'm just going to add a little line maybe one or two sweeps of a different color around that edge. Then I'm ready to add water. Now the way this trick works is it sometimes looks like nothing doing. It's like it's not happening. And the trick is you've got to let it sit here for a while. Paint on top of your marker lines. That's important. It's like you're sweeping the marker color toward the center. So with your damp brush, it doesn't have to be super drippy. Just sweep that color toward the center and then just let it sit and dry. As it sits, the longer it sits and dries, the more the color will start to come out from the marker and turn into a paint. And I'm gonna finish this up and I'm done with my chef portrait. I know that yours looks amazing because that's the kind of artwork you make. You are an amazing artist. If you enjoyed making a self-portrait, a picture of yourself, I have all sorts of self-portrait videos that you can find right here on my YouTube channel and I add more all the time. So you might want to subscribe and if you've enjoyed, don't forget to give this video a great big thumbs up. And until next time, I hope that you chefs had a blast. I know that I did, and I'm excited about Chef Bob.